Hello, True Health Seeker, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Learn True Health podcast. I am thrilled to bring you today's guest. She is so inspiring to me. When she was in her 20s, she had over 20 diagnosed illnesses. She was over 200 pounds. She was suffering from a constant mini strokes, migraines. She had Hashimoto's, anxiety, depression. Uh, she was constantly having miscarriages and it was, she was just so depressed and at her wits end, she was on countless medications. Then she finally, after, um, many, many attempts of, uh, fertility treatments was able to give birth, but her child ended up being diagnosed with failure to thrive. And she was on the brink of losing her child and losing herself because she was so sick and her kid was constantly in and out of the doctor's office and in and out of hospitals. And her child had asthma and was on all kinds of medications. So I've painted this picture because it seems really bleak. There's so many people out there who are suffering similar to Robin, who are on medications or in and out of doctor's offices, who are just depressed and who feel on some level that it's their fault or their body's broken. Well, to give you the light at the end of the tunnel, she turned this entire thing around. She did it with a whole foods method. She did this long before anyone had ever heard of a green smoothie. She started throwing vegetables into a blender. And that was not the only thing she did, but it was the first thing she did. And it made a huge impact. And in fact, her toddler was able to get off the medications. And so was she. She healed her Hashimoto. She lost the weight. Her anxiety and depression are gone. Her mini strokes and her migraines stopped. She got her energy back. She was able to sleep. She ended up becoming an athlete and is uh, just very healthy, lost over 70 pounds and kept it off. And now she's very healthy and in her 50s and had several more children who were healthy. She did all of this using the formula that she figured out over years of research, which is to incorporate the highest vibration foods. What's really interesting, and she's such a pioneer, is that now we see that we can actually measure the frequency, the hertz of uh, foods and of humans and of animals and of, you know, inanimate objects. And what they found is that people who are vibrating, who are, you know, oscillating, their frequency is oscillating at the hertz of uh, between 50 and 55, that they are uh, sick and that people who vibrate on the frequency of 62 to 68 hertz cannot have illness, that a body that is vibrating at a higher frequency cannot have illness in the body. The body is healthy. And those who are on their deathbed end up are going as low as 25 hertz. It's very interesting to consider that we could eat foods that are higher than us in hertz and it would actually raise the frequency, raise the vibration of the body and that disease cannot live in a body that is in a state of high frequency. And this uh, coupled with several scientists that she's been studying from and also working with, she has created a list of the 20 highest vibration foods. And when you incorporate these foods into your life, it actually raises the frequency of your body. Not only does it nourish your cells because they're just happen to also be really healing whole foods, but it will raise the frequency. And this is what she used to heal her body and help her son heal as well. And all of her children have a very healthy life. And it's just wonderful. It's a great story for those who are suffering right now, because there is hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Robin shows that there is a way that you can improve your health to the point where you no longer need to be on drugs, where you're so healthy that you no longer have all these symptoms. She also shares 45 of the lowest frequency foods that we want to avoid because they're pulling us down. I was really surprised to hear that pork, for example, what number it was. And I'll let you listen to the interview and she shares more about that. But what I wanted to make sure that you get is this list. She's giving it to you for free. Go to learntruhealth.com slash vibe list, like vibration list. Go to learntruhealth.com slash vibe list and get that uh, list for free. She's also giving away her book that's coming out. Um, she's written 15 books in the last uh, just over 10 years. And I think that is so impressive. 
This one is a $26 hardcover book that she's giving to the listeners for free. All you have to do is pay for shipping. And there's she only bought a few hundred of those and she's giving them away for free right now. So I want to make sure you get your copy for free. So go to learntrail.com slash vibe for the free book. And these links are going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. And there's also a link that I want you to have. And that is that she created three videos where she teaches you different activities that you can do to, to measurably increase the frequency of your body. Now, what happens when you increase the frequency of your body, she has noticed and countless others because she has toured uh, the United States and taught this and gotten lots of feedback on it over the years. And she notices more energy, more mental clarity, better sleep. Uh, those are the the first things that you notice when you do this. So I'm excited to find out what you will notice from doing this and from just take this grocery list of the 200 highest frequency foods. And every time you go to the grocery store, buy five or six of them and add it to your diet, add it to your um, your family's diet and just begin to see what happens. It's very exciting because she says that everyone has incredible results and she shares some of them in the interview. Thank you so much for being a listener of the Learn Trail podcast. Please, if you love this interview, pass it on. Let's help as many people as we can to stop suffering. I'm so thrilled that Robin came here and vulnerably shared with us her story and how she overcame this because I know that there are those who are listening who are also suffering and I no longer want you to suffer. I want you to get your health back and I'm so happy that I can bring you this information. There is hope. Keep working at it. You're doing a great job. You're listening to this podcast. You're taking action. There's going to be a day when you look back and you feel so good. And I want you to have that. So get that list, uh, the 200 most high vibration foods and begin to add it to your diet. And please share the results with me. You can email me, ashley at learntrohealth.com or go to our Facebook group. It's Learn Your Health in Facebook. Uh, you can go to learntrohealth.com slash group or you can just Google Learn True Health in Facebook and join the group. It's free. It's for all the listeners. I'd love to see you there and I'd love to hear the results that you have by adding these foods to your diet and increasing your vibration. Excellent. Thank you so much and enjoy today's interview. Welcome to the Learn True Health podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 178. I am thrilled to have with us another uh, wonderful podcaster. Robin Openshaw is the host of Your High Vibration Life. She's also, you've probably heard of her, she's also the famous Green Smoothie Girl. You can find her Green Smoothie Girl on Facebook, greensmoothiegirl.com. Uh, she's been helping people for many years get their life back, not just from green smoothies, though. That's that's just the fun part, right? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the show, Robin. Thank you. It's so nice to be here, Ashley. Thanks for having me. I had a great time talking to you before we hit record because uh, you shared with me something that I think is brilliant, and that is you're teaching people how to eat to increase their energy and vibration because there's foods that, as now we know foods can be alive there can be enzymes and energy and vibration in our food or we can go like go to mcdonald's and eat something that's completely dead and void of void of energy void of vibration void of enzymes uh so we can either heal the gut biome heal our, ourselves on a, an energetic level uh, with our food, or we can just keep eating, you know, dead microwaved crap, right? And and we'll obviously see disease from that. And you're teaching people how to eat and look for food that that heals us on a on an energetic level. I I think that's brilliant. I'm so excited to hear more about this today. Good. Well, I'm excited too because I really feel like Einstein's way of thinking has permeated so many parts of life these days. There's quantum physics. The world wasn't ready for it when Einstein said everything in life is vibration. So long ago, the world was like, huh? What are you talking about? We're still figuring out the components of an atom. They're still very much in Newton's physics. And you might be wondering why I'm talking about Newton and Einstein here. But, you know, Tesla came along shortly after that and said, if you want the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And these, these principles have 
infiltrated manufacturing and physics and biology. There's this whole field of quantum biology that's blowing up. And even in Western medicine, I mean, Dr. Al says that energy medicine is the next frontier in medicine. And we have, we have lasers that are just focused frequencies. Lasers can, can, you know, we can cut someone open half an inch in their abdomen and with focused killing frequencies, we can chop out a diseased organ or an organ that is no longer functional and cut it up in pieces and pull it out. And then we can use focused frequencies in, in the form of healing lasers to help people heal 10 times faster. I mean, so much exciting is happening in the world of understanding energetic frequencies, but you know where it hasn't hit. And this is why I just, I just wrote my 15th book about to come out that we're talking about today called vibe. We haven't brought those concepts into nutrition. And instead, all the diet cults, all the packaged foods, the whole the whole field of wellness and nutrition isn't yet talking about quantum physics, quantum biology, Einsteinian thinking brought into our own personal wellness and the food that we choose and the way that we're processing our emotions. And so the idea here is one thing I want to talk about really fast is that we are evaluating our food with some really dated concepts. The whole idea of calories, everybody knows what a calorie is. It was discovered or invented 170 years ago. And honestly, the only thing that it's good for is for standardizing packaged foods. It's for the manufacturing processes. It has just about nothing to do with whether we're healthy. And when we start to look at the vibrational frequency of our food, and I would love to talk about that, I would love to talk about what it has to do with your own personal vibrational frequency, then we have to take a look at how outdated and ridiculous counting grams of proteins, fats, and carbs is, and how outdated and useless thinking of our food in terms of caloric energy is. So there's a principle of quantum physics. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about this, Ashley. I know that you want to talk about my story, which is actually a pretty great part of this whole thing. But there's a principle of quantum physics that I want to make sure that we talk about because it's super powerful. And anyone can understand it. Don't be scared by the whole idea of quantum physics. And that is that a substance of a higher frequency can cause a substance of a lower frequency to increase. And the reverse of that is true as well. And so it has incredible application for what we're using to medicate ourselves with. It has really powerful implications for the foods that we're choosing to eat. What are they doing to our vibration? We have a specific vibrational frequency and it can be measured. It might not be on the back of your food packages, but I hope someday that it is because what's on the back of your food packages doesn't have anything to do with whether you're going to be disease proof or prone to disease, but vibrational frequency does. Ah, oh, so fascinating. I'm excited to dive into this. Talking about quantum physics, in 2005, I saw the, the documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know? And I think everyone should watch it at least three times. I, I, I When I watched it, I immediately, it was like late at night, and I immediately hit play again and stay up to like two in the morning. I had to watch it again immediately because it opened my mind. It was like an atom bomb inside my head, and my entire world changed that day. Be, uh, understanding this idea that our thoughts affect our uh, energy and energy it can you know keep us either low vibration or high vibration and it, it's proven now with science they can prove this um, you can now watch what the bleep do we know on Amazon I think with Amazon Prime so it's available definitely go watch it to, to dive more into this understanding of quantum physics and how uh, what Robin is saying is true that our food and the vibration of our food can affect our health on a cellular and emotional and spiritual level. But yes, let's get into your story because I think it's really interesting uh, to set up how you got here. How, how did you get here to, uh, to see and understand that vibration and food um, really does play a role in our health? Well, thanks for asking because my personal story is obviously really intimate for me and has impacted my family deeply. But also, I thought I was saving my little son's life when I made these discoveries. And later, I discovered that it was impacting my entire family and then this community online that has just been super viral and really insane. But, you know, it started when I went on ABC Disney's show Wife Swap. Season five, I was on reality <laughs> TV 
And this is back before cable had, you know, hundreds of reality TV shows. This was one of the biggest ones ever. And our, our episode aired during sweeps week and was watched by 23 million homes. And this was, Oh, what was it like 10, 11 years ago? And I put the website green smoothie girl, dot com up back then because ABC Disney told me we're going to get deluged with people trying to reach you. They want, they're going to want to know what this green smoothie is. They, uh, it's a long story, like how they recruited me to be on the show, but, but, uh, wife swap always has like the overstructured, overeducated sort of overachieving mom goes to swap lives with the easygoing fun. Her house is a mess mom. Like it's just a formula and they sort of force both moms into that into that, you know, mold, whether it really fits or not. But they really honed in on this, this thing that I did with my kids. And if, if I go back to why I started putting tons of greens and superfoods in a blender and feed my children a, a pint of it a day, and I drink at least a quart of it a day, literally ever since then, way, 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 way back when, here's where it came from is when I was 26, I um, I had been through five years of infertility here in Utah, where I live, everybody gets married at like 19, 20. I was a 20 year old, young, married, wannabe mom. And I went through college and grad school, married the whole time, wanting to have a family wasn't happening. I was having all kinds of miscarriages and worse. I was having all kinds of disease states and I ended up on one drug after the other. By the time I was 26 years old, I was verging on obesity I had 21 diagnosed diseases. I was on several different prescription drugs. I was having mini strokes. I, so I was having cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure. I had a giant tumor that they were watching. It wasn't malignant yet, but it had that potential. Um, I, I, was, I was having all kinds of autoimmune diseases. I was on several different drugs for four different autoimmune conditions. I was Hashimoto's. I would not discover that for quite a few years. Um, and I was really miserable. I was, I had been an athlete growing up and healthy and at my ideal weight and my, my, my health was just going downhill. Well, I finally, after my fifth artificial insemination, I got pregnant with twins and I was so excited. And I, not, not too long after finding out I was pregnant, I miscarried one of the twins, but I was, very, very lucky to carry one of them to full term. And I gave birth to a nine pound, 23 inch redheaded baby boy. And I was so excited to be a mother. I just every morning I would just wake up and just pinch myself that I got to be a mom. And I'll tell you when he was seven months old, the pediatrician told me that it was time to wean him. And I weaned him onto formula because that's what he told me to put my baby oh my onto. Gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's what everybody in America does, right? They give you a case of Enfamil or Similac in the, in the hospital. It's every, every addictive thing, they give you the first one for free. And you gotta, you gotta wonder why you leave the hospital with cases of free Similac, right? Well, I, I weaned my baby onto formula and then I weaned him onto many bottles a day of cow milk because the pediatrician told me, Hey, all he needs is lots of milk. It's got lots of calcium. It's got it's got protein. I mean, fruits and vegetables, they don't really matter. That's just fiber. So that's the nutrition advice that I headed into motherhood with. And I was feeding him chicken nuggets, Otter Pops, Ben and Jerry's, hot dogs, you name it. I was, and, and I just figured, well, he's getting lots of cow's milk. I get together with all the other young moms at the park. And I remember bragging bragging contests where everybody would say, well, my kid drinks six bottles of milk while my kid drinks eight bottles of milk a day. So I was doing what all the good moms were doing. And my son's health from the time that I weaned him onto formula absolutely tanked. And he went from this thriving, happy kid to constantly on bronchodilator drugs. He was diagnosed with very severe asthma. He fell eventually within a few months below the fifth percentile for weight because they kept putting him on liquid steroids. Well, I didn't know. I was just wasn't educated at the time that liquid steroids devastate your immune system. And he was on antibiotics because the steroids wrecked his immune system. Now I know looking back. And so he was on antibiotics, which destroyed his gut flora, which made him wide open to every bacterial or viral infection that came down the pike. It got to the point when he was a year old, I wouldn't put him in a nursery. I wouldn't let a babysitter tend him. 
I was watching over his health because he was in and out of hospitals and emergency rooms and doctor's offices. So he's on all these drugs. And when they, when I went to the doctor's office one time when he was 15 months old, after having some near death experiences where he was breathing so shallowly, so rapidly, his asthma was so severe that we really thought we were going to lose him by morning. I was prescribed his fifth course of liquid steroids. He was 15 months old. He had been diagnosed failure to thrive. He had he was below the fifth percentile for weight. And as I was wa- as I was walking out of the doctor's office, the doctor said to me, like it was like a by the way. Oh, by the way, five courses of liquid steroids is is guaranteed to stunt your son's growth. Oh. Yeah. So I stopped. I just stopped in my tracks and I I I was doing the math in my head and I said, hey this is the fifth course. And I handed him back the prescription and he just pushed it back, just wouldn't take it and pushed it back. And I said, well, this is five. We can't do this. What else you got? And he said, we don't have anything else. You, there's no magic bullet here. You have used all the drugs that we're going to use. Like, and I said, well, what about in like crisis do or die time? And he said, you've already been there several times. You you've used everything that we have. And so I, I held myself together just long enough to get in the car and strap my baby in. And I sobbed my guts out all the way home. And when I got home, I had a moment of total clarity where I realized that I had been depending on this guy in the white coat to save my child and it wasn't going to work. And so I had had an experience earlier in my life. My, um, my high school years were very, very much marked by two family members. My 33 year old uncle, and my 51-year-old grandmother had both been diagnosed with cancer at the same time. And my 33-year-old uncle chose to do chemotherapy and radiation, and he had three small children. My grandmother, who was his mother, she chose to opt out of chemotherapy and radiation. She said no to chemo and radiation. This is like 1981. Nobody was doing this. And she instead chose the Gerson therapy and a number of supplement and nutritional protocols. She got completely off of sugar, processed foods. She had been a total Dr. Pepper addict. She went totally plant-based. She drank like 11 glasses a day of green juice and and carrot juice, and she turned orange. She drank so much (laughs) carrot juice. I remember walking out of school. She came to pick me up from school one day, and I remember like trying to walk as far away from her as I could because I was like, oh my gosh, people are looking at me like, why are you walking around this orange lady? Well, I'll tell you, looking back now, I just turned 50 this year and my grandmother is my greatest hero and my earliest inspiration because my grandmother, um, went on, she beat cancer. It was a metastatic stage three C, uh, melanoma. It was metastasized to her breasts, her lymphatic system. They told her she had a year to live and she said no to chemo and radiation. And I'm not here to make a judgment about people choosing chemo and radiation. And I don't think there's a, you know, clear cut path for everyone, but my uncle who did chemo and radiation um, died 18 months later, and he died of the effects of chemotherapy and radiation. He, he didn't actually die of cancer, um, and he left behind three small children. My family was so rocked by it. They were so devastated. But my grandmother beat the cancer, went on to live another 20 years, and she was there when all four of my babies were born. She was a huge part of my life for, for decades longer. And so when I had this hit your knees devastated, sobbing your guts out. What am I going to do moment when my son was so very ill and I was sick too. Like I said, 21 diseases. I was on a bunch of different drugs. I was only 26 years old. That day I had that to draw on. My grandmother was still alive and I, I drew on her, her support, her knowledge, started reading the book, started, started studying because I had everything to gain. And I went in my kitchen and I threw out all the processed food. And I have never since then brought the processed food back. That doesn't mean that none of us have ever eaten it. It means it meant that it was a very minor part of our diets from then forward. And back then, like my grandmother, who was super hardcore with her diet for two years, we were super hardcore about it. And let me tell you why. The day that I went in my kitchen and I had thrown away all the processed food and I really didn't even know what to eat. I didn't have those habits. I didn't have those recipes. It, it, it was a bit of a learning curve. I went to the store and just bought some random stuff. And I went in my kitchen in this little early transition. And I got my blender out and I just started putting stuff in the blender. And I'm not super proud of everything that went in the blender. It probably could have been better, but (laughs) I put a couple handfuls of spinach and a handful of alfalfa sprouts in the blender. And I blended it all. Now keep in mind, this was 23 years ago. 
And keep in mind that 10 years ago, when I put greensmoothiegirl.com up, there were 50 searches a month worldwide on the term green smoothie. Now, in the last 10 years, it's now a household word. Everybody drinks green smoothies. Who cares about their health? There's thousands of YouTube demos, uh, lots of websites dedicated to that concept. But 10 years ago, 50 searches a month worldwide on Google on the term green smoothie. Like it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. It just, it just wasn't even a thing. So, so I went in the kitchen 23 years ago, threw a bunch of stuff in the blender and I went out and I, I put my baby in the grass and I sat on the porch and I started drinking this. It would, it would never occur to me in 1 million years on that day that my son would eat raw spinach and alfalfa sprouts. So I was sitting there drinking my first ever green smoothie that didn't even have a name. And my son got up out of the grass. He was just starting to walk and he walked over to me at 15 months old and he, he said, can I have some? And I had this little flash of mom genius. And I said, no, it's mommy's. And so, of course, he, <laughs> he, he was like, you know, he was like, you know, starts begging, right? Please, please, just a little. And I said, OK, just a little, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it, it's mommy's. You know, of course, I'm fully intending to let him have as much as he wants and then some. So I put that glass with a straw in front of him and I watched my one year old drink two handfuls of spinach and a handful of alfalfa sprouts to the bottom of the glass and make those slurping noises and then say, can I have some more? And that day was an epiphany. And that is the day that I realized that I could get my family to eat healthy, whole plant foods that are life giving. And that was the first day of 23 straight years of that being a staple in our diet. And it what it did, it's not like that's the only thing we did. And it's not like that was the only habit that caused us to turn the corner. But it it really created an awareness for me. And very quickly, Ashley, and I do mean very quickly, we turned a corner, we start with that extra energy that we got from this amazing habit that we did very quickly make a habit because I was motivated, right? I had a dying child. I use that energy to learn some more and make different recipes and start studying more and go deeper with this. And my son never again was on a liquid steroid. I, my infertility problems that I'd had for five years disappeared. I had three more children without any intervention. I got off all of the medications, all of the, all of the diagnoses disappeared. I haven't been on those medications since I'm a competitive athlete now, lost the 70 pounds. I, I play four seasons a year in leagues and tournaments. I travel all over the world. I have a life that by any standards is pretty, pretty exciting and spectacular. And e the even better part of the story is that my son, who would never again be on a liquid steroid or an antibiotic, within a few months, we had him completely off of the bronchodilators, which you know, we were having to strap a gas mask to his face every four hours and administer inhaled bronchodilators, which was really stressful and caused him to not be hungry. Like he didn't eat. That was part of why he was so underweight. My son went on to his senior year of high school, lead the state of Utah in, in RBIs in baseball. He, he went to the state playoffs, led his team, um, hit two grand slams, pitched a shutout, carried off the field named most valuable player at the state playoffs at six foot three. Ah, yes. <laughs> I've been crying this whole time just so you know, like <laughs> you can't see it, but, oh man, I love, I love your story. That is so inspiring, especially for so many listeners who are, who are right now in, in possibly the lowest time in their life going through drug after drug, diagnosis after diagnosis, or misdiagnosis after misdiagnosis, and struggling with um, figuring out how to tweak their diet or, or something so they can finally get that glimmer of hope, that, that light at the end of the tunnel. Everyone wants to be in the position you are in now where you're drug-free, diagnosis-free, symptom-free, and full of health, and you have healthy children. And that's exactly uh, what you're teaching uh, so many people to do. Now, were you the, in the Wife Swap uh, TV show, were you the kind of the A, A personality or the messy personality? 
<laughs> I was the overeducated, ambitious, if my kids don't get in the car by 747, they have to walk to school. I was that mom. I was that mom. And when, and, and... <laughs> when you guys swapped, did the, did the other mom feed your kids crap food? Oh, nonstop crap food. In fact, I came home and walked through my home, which is, you know, well tended and clean and picked up and kids do chores. I, I walked through my house and had a complete sobbing meltdown because there were, you know, God forbid there were potato chips ground into the carpet and the, and the, like the couches from all the parties that they had held. And the place was just like a total shambles. And I called ABC up and I was like, get someone here to clean this now. <laughs> so it was quite the experience. And the other mom was inner city, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and her family, they owned a skate shop and they just sold junk food in the skate shop. It was, they didn't talk about this in the show, but it was a government subsidized skate shop. Nobody made any money there, but none of the kids, I, I would make green smoothies for them. And none of them had ever had a vegetable <gasps> like ever, ever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did, um, so how many days were your kids with this other mom? Uh, the show says it'll two weeks. It'll change your life, but it's kind of a little bit of a, you know, bureaucracy, you know, I think she actually was there in my home for a week, but you know, they kind of come back and they do clean up and they get you to film stuff that isn't quite what, you know, they, they like make you wear specific clothes cause they're rescripting some of it. I mean, reality TV is, is uh, reality only in the loosest sense right. of the word. <laughs> right. So for that week though, because before, so my understanding with, if you kind of map out the timeline before the show, you had got your kids health back right like they've been doing the green smoothies and they were healthy yeah. at that point they weren't they weren't on drugs uh you weren't on drugs and everyone was kind of was 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 healthy and doing green green smoothies and lots of healthy things every day right yeah yeah we were and, we were all just totally vibing by then and life was good and and I kept my family you know I I gardened I made our foods from scratch and uh we we were really healthy and on a good path then and so that one week of eating probably not green smoothies, right? Did your kids, um, did you see a difference in their behavior and their grades and their, uh, in their health? Did they start getting colds? Like did that one week of eating crap food, um, cause the sort of them to go slip backwards in their health? No, no. And you know, I mean, it's not like my kids eat a perfect diet now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I came home and everybody was, you know, sick and overweight or anything <laughs> after a week, but but, you know, I mean, that happens. We, you know, we uh, took the money that Wife Swap paid us and took them to Europe and things, you know, our diet wasn't awesome in Europe either. I mean, we've learned ways to travel that we can eat healthier than probably anybody else, you know, does when they travel. But, you know, when we're, the thing is, is when you're, you've built your cells out of high vibration materials and when you are strong and your immune system is healthy and you're detoxifying well. Um, you can go and you can play a little bit. It's not that if we aren't hyper vigilant every day of every year, you know, we're going to get knocked down, but you know, it's more about what you do every day than what you do once in a while. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, this, this makes sense because I've had other guests on that, that have said, you know, they've recovered their health and now they're to this place where they could go eat pizza and they don't feel horrible the next day because they've spent so many years building up their body. And so the once in a while eating something like eating gluten or dairy or whatever, that once in a while doesn't hurt them like it would have back in the beginning. So you're saying that you're eating those high vibration foods builds you up so much that that once in a while or when you're traveling, it's, it's not really going to just completely derail you. Yeah. I don't know that it's really uh, feasible uh, unless someone is very scared and they're totally vigilant for a period of time to try to beat some disease. Uh, I don't know that most of us who are healthy are not indulging now and then. I do not eat a perfect diet. I've never said that I do. Um, I'm really clear about that with my audience. I eat a plant-based diet, but that doesn't mean that I never eat any you know, animal foods. I try to keep them clean. I try to avoid them in restaurants because I don't trust the sourcing. But you know, it, that's the thing is when, when things are going well, you know, you can handle some, mm -hmm. some setbacks and some not so perfect fuel. It's not about eating perfectly. It's about getting enough 
really healthy, consistent habits in your life. And, you know, and doing, we, we teach to do a detox a couple of times a year that can be super, super powerful for just clearing a bunch of junk out of all of your organs of elimination so that, you know, you're just, you're optimized. And that doesn't mean that you go back to eating out of the drive through. It just means you go back to, you know, living in the real world. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So after this, uh, you've launched the, the green smoothie girl, uh, com. And that was, you know, 10 years ago, like you said, you're about to launch your, your 15th book. So you've been busy these last 10 years. <laughs> what, tell us the story of the last 10 years and how you got from there to now educating people on high vibration foods and their benefits. Yeah. It's kind of like the next gen stuff. I mean, I did a lecture tour for six years. I would go out to three to five cities in a row and I was in as many as 88 cities a year. For six years, I was in a total of 450 cities. Our audience would show up in droves. We would have an average of two or 300 people at, at our lectures. And I loved it. And I would teach people simple ways to eat more whole foods. But I, I encountered this idea of vibrational energy. And I just started digging deeper and deeper. And I started to feel like there was a missing link in how we look at food. And more than that, my actual, my, ed- my educational background and my early career is as a psychotherapist. And... I feel like there's something missing in the way that we help people with mood disorders. Um, Anxiety and depression are rampant. And the way we deal with people is kind of similar to how we deal with people in the food realm is we tell them to count calories and get lots of protein and send them home. And with, with psychotherapy and with helping people out of these low emotional states that so many people are suffering with, we medicate them with an SSRI and we do talk therapy about what happened in their high trauma childhood or whatever, but we don't actually take a look at the impact of the fuel that we're choosing on our emotional state. Because the thing is, let, let me tell you how some things that I tripped on. I've tripped on the work of, I, I mentioned an Einstein quote. I mentioned a Tesla quote. Tesla was an Austrian physicist. He came to the United States wanting to channel the energies of Niagara Falls for he, for the human population. And he was only 20 years old and he came with a letter in his pocket, introducing him to Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, who eventually would have 300 patents worldwide, worked with Thomas Edison. They had a big falling out and they ended up fighting for years. But Tesla, who was, you know, immigrating from, from Austria said that the secrets of the universe were found in understanding vibration and energy and frequency. And I discovered that and started to discover all the different applications of this idea. And I was like, why, why are we still talking about food as if it's all related to grams of macronutrients or even micronutrients, even that is just very deficient. And so I feel like we're, we're way behind in our understanding of food and our understanding of emotion and how, how they're all connected. So I I discovered the work of a scientist named Bruce Tino. He has died, and I am actually picking up where he left off with another PhD scientist named Beverly Beverly Rubick. And Beverly and I are going to be doing some research together where we measure vibrational frequency in 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 uh, using a bio biophotonic scanner, as well as or biophotonic emissions, which are the the weak light that that is emitted from Uh, foods and shows with pictures. We'll be able to show with pictures, the vibrational energy of different foods. We'll also be able to, in our, in our research, we're going to measure what happens to a person when they eat certain kinds of foods. And there's another technology that uses gas chromatography that will also yield really great visual pictures of vibrational energy. And so we're going to pick up where Tino left off. But the reason I like to talk about Tino's research is that he measured vibration in Hertz. And we're all familiar with Hertz because that's electrical energy. And I think it's really good for us to sit for a minute and think about the fact that we are electrical beings. And that's why, you know, drinking water is super important. We need conductivity. Not only do we need the cleansing that comes from water flushing out our cells, that's a, you know, sort of Newtonian thinking, but there's also the conductivity of us as energetic beings. And so there's a number of ways that we could talk about, about how to ground and how to charge 
knowing that we are energetic beings. If everything in life is vibration, then we are made up of energies. I have a medical doctor friend of mine that I was talking to recently. Uh, we were on a trip together and she was talking about how even DNA is energy. And so Tino measured a lot of different human beings and he measured a lot of different substances. And so let's go back to, if I, if you remember one thing from this interview, if you're listening, remember that everything in life is vibration, but remember this principle of quantum physics that I met, that I mentioned before, this would be a great thing to write down because there's a lot of things you're doing in your life that, that, that this is very relevant to. And remember that is a substance of a higher frequency can cause a substance of a lower frequency to increase. So remember that one. Here's another thing to remember. Another principle of quantum physics is that like attracts like. So now let's go to some of the measurements of Bruce Tino, which sort of blow my mind. He measured lots of people who are without any active disease state. So we'll call them healthy humans and healthy human beings measure between 62 and 68 Hertz of energy. Okay. So keep that in mind. 62 to 68 Hertz of energy is a healthy human being. Now, he measured people with massive candida overgrowth and people with Epstein-Barr, and they might be as low as 50 to 55 hertz. So imagine that your immune system is fighting with tons of yeast overgrowth. It's going to take you down as much as 15 hertz of energy. So there are things that can really bring us down. He measured end-stage cancer patients with stage 4 cancer, bedridden, very near the end, who were as low as 25 hertz mm. of energy. Yeah, so let me tell you a couple of data points for food. And Ashley, you, you and I were talking about this before we started this show, that we actually have made a shopping list because people aren't familiar with it and it's not on the back of packaged foods. This is this is like Einstein's thinking applied to food and the food industry isn't interested in it because as long as they keep you thinking in terms of calories and slicing and dicing gr grams of proteins, fats, and carbs, they can keep selling you more crappy packaged foods. But if we had the vibrational frequency of foods and we had a shopping list, which is what we've made, you can give it to your followers for free. I think you're putting it at learntruehealth.com slash vibe list. So you can get it there for free and it's the 200 most high vibration measured high frequency foods. And at the end of the shopping list, we also want you to know what the lowest frequency foods are. These are the ones to avoid, to minimize in your diet, keep very low. And so let me tell you a couple of data points about food that might surprise you. I'll have you guess, okay? You don't know the answer to this, so it's okay whatever you guess. But keeping in mind that a substance of a higher frequency is going to raise yours mm -hmm. and a substance of a lower frequency is going to lower yours. That's true too. What do you think the vibrational frequency of pork is? 50? 50? I always love to get guesses. <laughs> uh, I, like, I like where you're going, but it's actually two hertz. What? Two. Yeah. So sorry if I've ruined bacon for everyone, but... I'm, I'm okay with ruining hot dogs and bacon. They're just, they're just not good food. But, and part of that is probably because of not just this is an animal that's been dead and in the supply chain and tends to be raised in really cruel environments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fear, fear is the lowest vibration emotion, fear and anger. And when you raise an animal in a cage or a pen and they never get to move around, you're when they when they kill that animal, that animal has absorbed that frequency, and so you're eating a very low vibration food. Okay. Did Bruce Tayo um see that in people that when they're in fear states, their hurts yes. were lower? Well, not just Bruce Tino, but you know who does great work in this area. You are probably familiar with them, as educated as you are in holistic health. Um, Heart Math Institute mm -hmm. does some really great work with the effect of emotions on us and, and our own heart and mind emanations and how they, how they affect each other. And so just to go sideways a little bit, cause this is a really important concept too. Heart Mouth Institute has done amazing experiment experiments, for instance, where 
two people with their backs to each other. One is hooked up to an EEG, which by the way, EEG is just measuring frequencies. It's just measuring the frequencies of your brain. Just, just to give you a sense of how much energies are incorporated into uh, Western medicine now. And then let's say, let's say I'm hooked up to the EEG and you're hooked up to the ECG, which is measuring heart waves. And you and I could have our backs to each other. So there's no possibility we're making eye contact we're not speaking to each other. And Ashley, if they put you, uh, you're, you're connected to the ECG. They, they connect you to that ECG and you are instructed to think about all the things in your life that you're grateful for. And they put you into a meditative state where you are totally in a flow state of thinking about gratitude. Not only will your heart or brain waves look like gratitude feels, which is, and this is in the book vibe, by the way, I show a chart of this and it's from the heart math Institute. The waves of gratitude are big and flowing and even, and they look like gratitude feels like now that's what the frequencies are that you're emitting. There's also, if they then put you into thinking about something that you're afraid of, or something that causes you to feel anger, they can chart that and, and anger on paper when it's recording your actual vibrational frequency looks like what anger feels like. It's sharp and jagged and thick and inconsistent. Anger looks like what anger feels like. But here's where it gets really crazy. And this is kind of woo woo, but I think your audience will get this. You sitting there in a, in a field creating vibrational fields of gratitude will register on my brain waves. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Like my frequencies increase from you emanating gratitude or love. It makes so much sense. Um, back in when I was a teenager, I went to some really fun psychic, um, talk. This guy was teaching how to be more intuitive and he took two divining rods, you know, um, basically two metal rods that are bent at 90 degree angle. It's, 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 it's exactly what the plumber d used when he came to my house and tried to find where the septic tank, the entrance to the septic tank was. He just held these two rods and he walked and all of a sudden the rods swung and he said there, okay, it's right below my feet. And I thought, how in the world did you do that? And he proceeded to explain that any, anytime there's a body of water or that there's electrical cord, there's a, a electromagnetic frequency and that the rods will move. Well, so, so then fast forward, I'm in this, um, psychic workshop and this guy goes, okay, stand on stage and he gets the participant to stand on stage. And he says, turn your back to me. And he walks towards the person slowly holding these rods and about five, when he gets to about five feet away from the person, the rods swing. And he goes, this, the, here's your, here's your aura. This is your field. And I'm going to teach you guys how to, how to tr make your field smaller and make your field bigger. And he said, you know, and, and it, you can you open your awareness. So your field gets bigger. And then he showed people that, you know, you, you could open up your, your, your aura, your energy field, and that it is detectable with equipment, with, with, with the same equipment that's used to detect power lines and, and, uh, flowing water underneath the ground or plumbers use it. Electricians can use it. The same equipment can be used to see clearly that you can just with your thoughts and your intention, you can increase your, your energy field around you. And so it makes total sense that we on an unconscious level can read each other's energy field. And, and it's just funny that we've, we ha we know, I think in ancient times we knew about this, but for whatever reason, it's been suppressed. There's so much in the ancient, what was taught in ancient times has been suppressed either through fear or through maybe, um, people wanting to control the masses. Cause you know, if everyone is, um, empowered and healthy and enlightened, they're, they're a hard population to control. So there's all kinds of reasons why this has been suppressed, but, and why people poo poo it. Um, but once you finally come to see that the science is now proving what they've knew, they've known in ancient times, now we need to learn how to utilize it for our health, for our benefit, right? Well, exactly. And there've been a lot of fascinating experiments where 
a group of people focus intention on someone's healing and it has a powerful effect on their healing. And this is kind of weird that I, I was at Burning Man a few weeks ago with um, a lot of our friends, our mutual friends in health and wellness. And there was um, a Burning Man is amazing just for the art that people bring and the great um, gifts of of uh, just expecting nothing in return, but just sharing with others that happens there. And Heart Math Institute had a display there where people gathered around in a circle and focus intention that actually lit up this this amazing art structure there. But you know, the reason it matters is that you and I have influence, especially here in the digital age. Right now, you and I are energy exchanging with people who are listening to this show. And if a substance of a higher frequency can cause a substance of a lower frequency to increase, what does that mean for you as an influencer who has 10,000 people a week listening to your show? You are at all times raising or lowering other people's frequencies. And I hope you get chills when you think about the impact that you're having on other people's uh, vibration just with the impact of the words that you use because you have the opportunity to inspire them and to get get energies in motion help them get unstuck in their in their emotions because emotions aren't bad emotions are just energies in motion the problem is when we get stuck on a loop and we keep reliving our lack of forgiveness which is one of the ways to live a really low vibration life is to constantly be replaying wrongs that other people do with us rather than releasing them and letting them go. I mean, it's, it's well known, at least theoretically that letting go of old wounds and the ways that people have wronged you throughout your life is one of the most powerful ways to be healthy, maybe even more powerful than the food we eat. But there's, there's so much that we do when it comes to metabolizing our emotion that leads to far more disease proof states. I mean, when our cells are at higher frequencies, like 10 Hertz, of energy differential is the difference between health and sickness. And I want I want to finish the food thing because it's not like I'm going to go through all the different what you can you can send your listeners to learntruehealth.com slash uh, vibe list to get the shopping list. Just print it off, take it to the store and get as many of those high vibration foods into your smoothies, salads, blend it into a salad dressing, get them in your diet in as many ways as possible and see what happens to literally your emotional state. Because we talked about fear and anger being the low vibration emotions, but literally when you use uh, higher frequency foods in your diet, rather than the crappy ones that most Americans are eating all day long, every day, you're far more capable. Um, my friend Stacy describes it as it's like standing on your tiptoes and there's this whole field of energies that you have access to. You're going to experience more intuition, more information. Uh, there's this chan there's just channels of information that you're, you know, the Hindus, the Taoists, even some Christianity in the book of Revelations talks about the third eye and there's all this information um, that is available to you, but you have to be living at the higher frequencies. You're not capable of creative flow states when you're trapped in the vibrations of eating genetically modified foods and the dollar menu and you're thinking, you know, you're thinking pissed off thoughts because somebody flipped you off when you were out in traffic and you just keep telling everybody about it and, and you just keep hard coding the negatives that happen to us because negatives happen to all of us and it's the happy high vibration people aren't the ones that bad things don't happen to. I didn't say that very well. Let's, let's put it this way. You know, People who are happy have plenty of bad things happen to them, but they've learned ways to metabolize them where they say, all right, what is there to learn from this? Mm -hmm. What's instructive about this? How can I get this energy moving through, flowing through? I feel it. I process it. I make amends where I need to, and I put it in the rear view mirror so I can get back into creative flow, gratitude, love, uh, positive energy exchange. And so I mentioned just really briefly a few minutes ago a another principle of quantum physics, but I sort of flew through it that like attracts like. And this is where, you know, that it was pretty woo 10 years ago when it came out that movie The Secret talking about talking about the law of the law of attraction. The law of attraction is I bring it way down to the level of practical ideas and habits 
that you can do in any given day to raise your frequency five hertz or 10 hertz will be super, super powerful. And they, I teach you how to ground. I teach you how to charge. I teach you how to detoxify your cells, all different things from food to metabolizing your emotions that will all help you into those higher vibration states. And like attracts like implies that when we build our cells out of higher vibration materials, when we choose into the higher frequency emotions and we quickly metabolize the negative events in our lives and the negative emotions, we are literally attracting better things because we are always attracting and repelling. We always are just like we are, we aren't just electrical beings. We're also magnetic beings and we are attracting and repelling. And you might be thinking, Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to repel. I don't want to repel anybody. Yeah, you absolutely do. You absolutely want to be repelling certain things, certain opportunities, certain charlatans who would take advantage of you and your family. And so when you are a high vibration person, you find more flow in your life. You find that you're choosing between a bunch of different good opportunities. You know, you're not living under a bridge and can't get a job. You are attracting more opportunity. You're attracting more money. You're attracting more high vibration people, which are the people you want to spend your time with. You're literally attracted to them and vice versa. You, Ashley, you have probably gone to conferences or to, you know, some kind of event where you meet a lot of people and you've had the experience of meeting someone, maybe, maybe even like a waitress in a, in a restaurant where that you almost rock back on your heels, meeting them. Like something about their energy is really dissonant for you. You can't get away from them fast enough. And on the flip side of that, you've probably had the experience where you're in a big room and there's someone across the room that's almost pulling you towards them. You feel this pull. You might've spent 60 seconds with them. You might've heard them talk from the stage. And it's not just, they said words that have to do with your work. It's energetic. And you, you spend a minute or two with them and you're planning the next time you can talk to them on the phone or, or go to lunch with them. Why is that? It is because of attraction and you are, you are literally exchanging electrons with anybody who comes into your energy field. And that has exciting potential for how we engage with each other, for how we recognize that we are all one. We're all exchange, we're exchanging electrons with people across the planet. It turns out crazy thought. That is, <laughs> it's amazing, but it's, I mean, when you understand quantum physics, it's, it's, it seems very, very, uh, ordinary. Um, but from the standpoint, the reality that we're standing in now that we've, that we have bought into, it seems impossible, right? So, uh, you know, you talked about complaining and how either you complaining or, or allowing someone else to complain around you or being, you know, among friends who complain, complaining is a form of domination and letting, allowing that environment to take place pulls you down. Like you said, it, you know, it's going to pull you down into that vibration and we want to repel that. And I don't give any energy to friends who complain. I just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to feed into it. Like in the Celestine prophecy, they say, you know, you, if you feed into that energy of that, that particular person, whatever, the, if they're going, if they want to like create more drama, you can feed into more drama, create more drama and more drama, or you can just not give that any energy and go, you know, either help them to not complain, right? Or just, you know, let them, if they're not, if they don't want to change you, you got to go surround yourself with people who, um, who want to be on that higher vibration, right? You, you want, you want to continually bring yourself up. Now, when it comes to healing, physical healing, have you seen this? Have you seen people focus on increasing their vibration through food, through, through mindfulness, through their emotions and have you seen them increase their hurts and increase their health as a result? Yeah. So I mentioned that pork in its various forms was measured by Bruce Tyno to be about two Hertz of energy. Let me, let me give you a counterpoint to that just to come full circle on that. What do you think the Hertz of energy is of a fresh pest green juice? We're talking about, you know, kale, collards, chard, a little, turmeric, ginger, 
lemon, that kind of thing. What do you think the energy is of that? Is it like fresh spring water and organic produce? <laughs> yeah, so organic produce, because organics are have definitely been measured at higher frequency than the exact same food uh, that got ripened after it was green in a warehouse in Chile, and it's four four weeks old by the time it gets to you on another, but sure, like a tomato raised like that versus one that you go pull out of your garden. Huge difference, huge difference. But let's just say organic, fresh pressed green juice. What do you think the Hertz is? I'm going to guess 75. You're right. That's exactly Ah, it. Cool. (laughs) Wow. So take that back to what I told you before about the first principle of quantum physics. Remember what it was? And I said, like, if you just remember one thing, Remember this. So what does that mean? Pork over here at two hertz and greens over here at 75 hertz. If our goal is to live a higher vibration life, what impact is that going to have to have more of more of the greens and less or none of the pork? Mm. Right. Have, so have you've seen people. Um, well, I guess you've been helping people for over 10 years drink green smoothies, obviously, and, and, and increase their hertz. But but have you have you been able to either see measurements or see Bruce Tyner or other people's work where they're where they're measuring hertz of someone b- before this kind of diet versus after they've experienced this diet and they've seen an increase in their hertz? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do with Beverly Rubick. By the end of the year, I want to be able to show people actual data and with biophotonic Um, emissions and gas chromatography, we can actually take photos of what happens to people's electromagnetic frequencies before and after specific foods. And we'll do, we'll do Doritos and we'll do hot dogs and we'll do Starbucks in addition to, you know, like the whole foods and we'll, we will prove this, but Tino's work was fairly limited. This is all in its infancy, not the idea of vibrational frequency, but the idea of applying it to foods. And so his work is what I quote, but we need to take it further. And I would love for there to eventually be, and I'd love to be part of bringing this to the mainstream. I'd love for there to be a Fitbit where we can tell when we go outside this, by the way, this is a little tip for you. Go outside, spend 10 minutes taking deep breaths. You're now oxygenating your entire respiratory system. The cells are are discharging, you're oxygenating where you're going to raise vibration all by all by itself. You're in the sunshine. So you're charging your electrical battery battery. You're as much of you as possible is in contact with earth, not your shoes, your feet, your feet, as much of your body as possible, where you're releasing all these dirty energies that we pick up during the day, because we're exposed to all these chaotic vibrations from our cell phones and devices and the PC that we sit in front of every day. So you're out there. Those are three things all, all by themselves that you do when you go outside. I mean, when you lie down in the grass, you're not just, you're not just like remembering your childhood where you had time to go lie in the grass and roll around and play. You're also literally discharging negative energies and picking up antioxidants. No different than when you drink green juice, you are picking up antioxidants from contact with the earth. The earth itself is 528 Hertz, the core of the earth. And we are supposed to be in contact with earth. And we always were for, for millions of years since, since humanoids were upright, we have been in contact with earth and we've lost that while you're doing that, do some, do some yoga stretches, twist some, some toxins out of your spine you know, go into contemplative thinking about things you're grateful for. These are all things that are super simple and they have a really powerful effect on your vibration. In fact, if you want, you can make up a URL right now, Ashley, and I'll give your followers three videos that they can go outside and do where they're doing all five of those things at once. One of them's yoga and those other four things with a, with a gratitude meditation that we walk them through to get them deep in a feeling of gratitude that that all by itself is super powerful. Then there's a Tai Chi one. You can do these anytime you want. We'll make it available to you for free. If you have a a URL you want to give and you could put it in your show notes too. And then the third one is an, um, is an emotional release exercise. So any one of these that you feel like you need in a day, go outside and you spend 10 minutes and you can get a total reboot and you're going to come in feeling not supercharged. Like after you've drank a stimulant like coffee, but but a different kind of sustainable energy where your electromagnetic frequencies are actually higher. 
Oh my gosh, I am so excited to see those videos and to share them with uh, with the listeners. How about uh, learnyourhealth.com slash reboot, because you said <laughs> these videos help us to reboot. Um, that's so R-E-B-O-O-T, so learnyourhealth.com slash reboot. Of course, the links to everything we're mentioning is going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. Thanks so much for giving that to us. That is really, really cool. Now, the earth is 200, and, uh, sorry, 528 hertz is there anything to say that we should be vibrating on the same level as earth is it is there any evidence to show that that like um aboriginals uh that are still hunter gatherers still living you know very much in touch with the earth or that you know people who are you know yogic monks living in the mountains and caves you know that that they're vibrating on a much much higher level like should we be at the same level as earth and we've just really like um, done ourselves a disservice by disconnecting with the, with the energy of the earth? Yes and no. We aren't supposed to. That's not our programming. We're not supposed to be at that exact vibration. However, that exact vibration, uh, Leonard Horowitz and others say that the vibration of pure love is also 528 hertz and that the chlorophyll in green plant life is 528 hertz. There are essential oils that are a couple hundred hertz, things that are actually in any kind of supply chain are going to decrease. But the point is, when we understand this and we have, you know, like the shopping list that, you know, is a great place to start, we have the awareness of this. We start to use the language of this. I mean, we talk every day, like here's somebody every day say, oh, I don't really vibe with that or that resonates with me. Well, resonating is oscillating. It's vibration. It's energies. We, we innately use the this language even though it hasn't been talked about in the common vernacular in terms of applying science the science of quantum physics and biology to what we're doing every day and getting mindful about how much time we're spending in fear anger frustration stuck emotions so we we don't have to be at 528 hertz but 528 hertz is one of the frequencies that Einstein, Tesla, Planck, the others discovered was one of the healing frequencies for human beings. There are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of healing frequencies and there are destructive frequencies too. This gets, this gets really weird, but it's very well documented that, you know, I mean, frequencies can be sound and light. And that's why Tesla was geeking out over Niagara Falls, even though he'd never been to America, he was 20 years old, he was literally dreaming about it at night, is that Niagara Falls is where the entire sonic spectrum resides. It's an incredible natural phenomenon, you know, sound, light, motion. It's, it's when, when we discover these secrets and we start to talk the language of energies and realize that everything is energies, we start to resonate with these things that are needle movers. And so being in contact with earth is just one of the ways that we heal. I mean, science doesn't know exactly why, but I believe that measuring vibrational frequencies will reveal a lot of it. Science doesn't know why, but science knows that people who are peaceful and people who experience a lot of their, they forgive easily and they don't live in negative emotions, they don't die of heart disease and cancer. They have high rates of what medicine would call spontaneous remission. It's become really clear that those kinds of aspects of our health are at least as powerful as the food we eat. And and that doesn't mean that by forgiving everyone and meditating every day and choosing into love and gratitude as often as we can in the course of the day means that we can eat out of the drive through. We got to do both of those things. I mean, I've been asked on various radio shows and, and podcast interviews, like what's the one thing. And I, I can't choose. I can't choose because there's two. there's two. They say, what's the, what's the one most powerful thing that you could do for, for your health? I think one is, you know, the highest vibration foods, this might shock you and people who love like, specific diets like paleo or ketogenic might freak out because fruits have taken such a bad rap in the last couple of fat <laughs> diets, but the highest vibration foods are fruit. Fruits are high vibration. And, and, and I'm just not a big fan of any fat diet that vilifies fruit because the, you cannot dot, you know, deny the power of the energetics of fruit. And it's, those are, that's not the only class of foods that are high vibration. 
but eating more of the raw organic plant foods and learning to metabolize your emotions well and find what they're teaching you, find what it is. Why are they there? They're not bad. There's no bad emotion. But if you're staying in a negative emotion longer than 90 seconds, then you're doing something to keep it around longer than it needs to be because that's the length of the average emotion. And I'm not saying that if you spent the first 18 years of your life being sexually abused that you should be able to resolve that in 90 seconds. I'm talking about every time it comes up, how are you resolving it and what are you doing with your mindset and your um and your your choosing into those those higher frequency emotions those are the two things like you didn't even ask me the question but since it sort of <laughs> came up it's those two are both so powerful i can't i can't choose one i think the research shows that there are things that are as powerful as eating a whole foods high energy diet mm, and you'd mentioned raw and that was one of my questions was Okay, I have like a bag of spinach. What if I cook it? Is it going to lower the hurts because I'm cooking it? Or is the, the energy still there? Uh, it's going to be lower if you cook it. And that doesn't mean you don't eat any cooked foods. It there, just means... Is there a difference between cooking on a gas stove, like cooking with fire, cooking with gas, versus cooking with uh, electricity or microwaving? I have never seen that. I've never seen any data on that. But it certainly makes sense that with the chaotic frequencies of microwaving that that probably really interferes with the energies of the plant food or any food right in macrobiotic cooking they say only cook with a fire and they have all these graphs where they show the energy frequencies of fire is this beautiful like um ocean wave versus the the ele electricity cooking an electric stove is uh, just these uh, very spiky kind of ugly looking graphs and so they go look see healing properties of fire so um, I was just curious if that, uh, maybe that could be one of the studies that happens in the future to see, uh, through the cooking processes, what are the healthiest ones, but you know, throwing them in a blender. I mean, is it, is it because you're taking the raw stuff, putting it in a blender, is the, the electricity of a blender going to mess with the vibration of the food or should we all just be, you know, running outside, growing our own garden and, and eating straight from the garden? I think we've got to live in the real world and those, <laughs> those things you're talking about aren't necessarily in the realm of possible for people who live in the city. So let's just do what we can do to eat more of the high vibration foods. And yes. some of the, some of the high vibration foods on the shopping list are going to surprise you and they're going to disrupt the way you think about calories. If you, if you have been thinking that the low calorie foods are good and the high calorie foods are bad. I mean, most of the people on your show are probably more evolved past that in the way that they think of food. But there's still a lot of really health conscious people who are really preoccupied with maximizing their grams of protein every day. And that just mm. doesn't have anything good, any good correlation to health. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who were seen as, as sick versus healthy in terms of the hurts, did um, Bruce Tino ever see them like after they got better and then noticed that like I measured that the hurts were different because I mean one could argue to play the devil's advocate that just different people are just on different levels and and they'll, they're always going to be that way whether they're sick or healthy I mean was there like this contrast that he saw someone when they're healthy he saw someone when they're sick and then saw them when they're healthy again and yeah the hurts were different I haven't seen him do like, I didn't see that he did anything really longitudinal on that or, or particularly definitive, but I will say this, the whole point of vibration is we're oscillating. We're in motion. I mean, the last thing in the world we want or want to expect is something static. I mean, what's a flat line, right? Anybody ever watched ER or Grey's <laughs> Anatomy? I mean, like that would be the worst, right? So it's okay that we're constantly in, in, in motion and it's okay that we sit with people in grief. I mean, look at you know, Mother Teresa and Jesus and Gandhi, we're with, we're with people in their low vibration. And on my show, Your High Vibration Life on iTunes, I did an episode called The Vibration of Grief. And I talked about the role that the lower frequencies play. And the, the it's not that we want to be Pollyanna and we don't live at fever pitch and we're not in creative flow all of the time. We have to have 
the good with the bad and we have to move through certain states and on a rainy day I feel a little bit melancholy and that feels right for that day and for certain seasons of my life and so I don't want people to think that they have to stay away from anyone who's suffering and not administer to people who are at lower frequencies maybe than we want to be however if we are constantly talking about negatives and if someone flips us off on the road and it's just an easy just an easy uh, everybody's had this experience kind of example and we come home and we talk to our partner about it and we're still mad about it the next day what's wrong with this picture right mm-hmm. and is is this in keeping with a goal of living a high vibration life mm-hmm. well and you mentioned being with someone who's grieving i think if you're with someone who's grieving you're feeling compassion and and that might be high, high vibration you know feeling it is compassion it and is love. if you're trying to if you're trying to be so that like you said that the purpose of a low vibration or being in um depression or sadness and reaching out and trying to get help if you if you're the person helping you know that that gives you the opportunity to see the contra the beautiful contrast and and appreciate what you have more and also help that person get out of it um you know i've been on and off juicing since i can remember since i was a kid my mom was like super into health food and so i i kind of lived I grew up in the 80s like dairy free and uh and 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 sugar free and processed food free and it was like I was like the freak right growing up uh eating healthy food and so I had that experience of going from uh tons of dairy to all of a sudden no dairy when I was about six and 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 overnight my life changed my health improved drastically so I know what you what you went through with your son I I I that was my childhood too and I remember the first time juicing and every time since it's like a drug. I feel so high. I, I really feel like my body's vibrating. And I've always thought it was just because uh, my body's detoxing. I, I couldn't really explain it. But this explains why if I yep. drink, if I take a bunch of organic food, put through my juicer and drink it, I feel high. My body feels like it's just about to take off and it vibrates and I feel excited and I, I actually get an emotional response. My body yep. just has an emotional response from drinking fresh organic juice. And so, so is, is vibration the, the reason? Absolutely. And I hope that you think about that when you eat an amazing salad and you're just like, whoa, why am I so creative in my work right now? And I know you do, but not everyone does. And I would love for people to have this language and this construct to understand and think about, you know, in your imagination after you drink that green juice and you're like, why um, is everything flowing today? It's, Mm. it's absolutely related to you just plugged your, your battery into the wall. You just got a charge. Ah, this is so cool. Yeah, we should all do it. Let's all go get the list. So learntourhealth.com slash vibe list. That link's going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. Let's get the list. Let's all get on the highest vibration foods that you give. And then and then we'll notice if our creativity and if our uh, um, if we're just, you know, not having those those br- those brain fog issues or, or having those, um, you know, those those lack of finding the right word issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you've got a book that's coming out and I'm really excited about that too. Tell us about your book. Um, and, uh, and, and I mean, you've written so many books are so exciting. So your 15th book, tell us about it. I've never been more excited about any book that I've released. We're, we're making a very big splash with this one. In fact, I bought a stash of books to give away free and I'm holding some for your listeners. Um, Ashley, and I don't know how fast, they'll sell out. So I'm going to give your listeners some for free. And so I can't promise that when you get to the page, there'll still be some free books, but the first 500 who go to the link that you give them, I'm giving you a book for free plus shipping. If you'll chip in on the 9.95 shipping and handling, I'll send you the $26 hardcover book vibe for free. And if we're out, it will forward to um, some special offer where you, where we give you some really cool bonuses Um, but for a little while I do have some free books, probably the first few days after you release this, um, it'll be good when the, when the book comes out on October 31st, 2017, that deal will definitely be over. So when the book comes out October 31st, or when we sell out that, that deal will be over, which, whichever one comes first, but I do have a little present for your, your listeners. I'm super excited about this. I want this book out there and I want people to know how to raise their vibe. 
Yeah, it's so great. So the to get the the free free book, it's 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 free, but you have to pay for shipping, and I think that's totally reasonable. You're giving them a twenty six dollar book. Um, LearnYourHealth.com slash vibe. That just makes it really easy because the book is called Vibe, right? Yep. And tell us a bit about this book and um, how much research did you do? Like how many, like just give us, paint the picture of, of, of the creation of this book. Well, I have been researching this for years and the deeper I get into it, the more excited I am as a construct for understanding our health and understanding the way our body works, that it's not just mechanistic. It's not just cells and electrons and, and protons and a nucleus and DNA strands. It's that we are entirely energetic beings. And so I did a lecture tour in 2014 where I spoke in 88 cities on this exact topic. It was called Your High Vibration Life. And 10,000 people showed up in my audiences and they really, really loved it, which made me feel like I could go out there with this book because I thought, is this too out there? Is this too woo-woo? Is this, um, you know, a little bit too Einsteinian for a Newtonian world? And I wasn't intending to do 88 cities. I had about 40 on the on the um, docket and I, w- I would go to you know, whatever, Dayton, Ohio or Atlanta, Georgia, and they would say, come back, we'll find you a place to speak if you'll just come back. So I ended up doing 88 Cities, loved it. So I decided to bring this work to the world. I feel like it's time. I feel like the world is ready for this and is ready to let go of the old ways that we think about food and emotion and our health. And so I'm super excited about it. The book is very practical. It doesn't, there's other people who, you know, I've read books where they're, you know, I've, read through 800 different studies and experiments on vibrational frequency. That's not what this book is. There's a bit of science, but only, you know, so that, you know, here's six principles of quantum physics and here's what it has to do with your health. But then we go to very actionable, practical things that you can do on a daily basis, each of which will have a positive impact on your energetics. Now you have healed yourself right from all those illnesses from all those symptoms and you got yourself off drugs and you've been you've been healthy for many years but in the last few years that you've been studying a uh, vibration of food and vibration of you know a, a thought and emotion um and you've obviously made some differences you've ch- made some changes to your diet uh, once you discovered the highest vibration foods what did you notice specifically when you focused on increasing your vibration, what can, like you said, you got more creative. What, what, what could you say? Absolutely. I noticed this, this, and this were different. Absolutely. I noticed that symptoms, physical symptoms disappeared. And absolutely. I noticed higher emotional states. I love flow. I love playing tennis and get to the end of two hours. And I can't even believe I've been there for two hours because I'm just loving it. I've lost track of time. Same thing when I'm in a writing project, like that's what we want our lives to look like. So my emotional state and my physical symptoms, um, those were the two highest impact thing when I started things, when I started to realize that if I'm seeking out high vibrational energy foods, I get healthier and I get happier. And since you went to so many cities teaching this, uh, can you share some testimonials of success of people who implemented what you taught them, how to raise their vibration using, you know, like you said, food and and, and intention and emotional work and what specific results did they see? Oh gosh, I've had hundreds of people write us and a lot of people on my Facebook page will use the languaging here, but I can't, I don't have in my head specific testimonials, but we certainly have had lots of people who are on a path of seeking more health, more happiness, tell us that considering the energies of the thoughts they're having, what they're spending their time doing when they're thinking in the car or out for a run um, or walking around in a grocery store, they get a lot more mindful about what their mind is doing and where their emotions are and what kind of foods they're putting in their grocery cart makes an enormous impact on the quality of their relationships and the kind of people they're attracting into their life and even the stuck energies in their, in their, um, career. I had someone just about two weeks ago, write me and say, I started implementing these things and I'm, I'm in sales and I take, I have to take a long time to make a sale. It might take weeks or months, 
working with a client and, and he said, I put like three or four of these things that you teach into play. And all of a sudden, every single sale I've been working on for months came, came through. He said, we were broke. Like we were living on fumes. I hadn't gotten paid in a couple of months and bam, all of a sudden I am in the money. And so that's just, that's just the law of attraction in action that like attracts like when you're when you're high vibration, you're attracting more high vibration opportunity and people, they will find you. Mm -hmm. I have had that experience the, the day before the day I, before I watched, um, what the bleep I was getting, I was trying to get a business loan so I could go and become a trainer of NLP. I was in my twenties and I had to, you know, I was living in Canada. I had to get, raise enough money to travel to the States and live for a whole summer in, in, in LA while taking all these trainings and pay for the trainings. And, um, and I, and, and I got a no and I saw the, what the bleep twice. <laughs> and the very next day I went back and I got a yes. And that was because at like two in the morning, I'm tears are streaming out of my eyes and I got it. I was like, I affect my results in life, my energy, my intention, every cell in my body shifts when I shift my focus and it was proven with the, with this, you know, this idea of this quantum physics, um, idea of how we create a reality. And I, and I, and, and there was like, no, the, the idea that of getting a no was no longer a possibility. It was just that this is happening. I am as certain that it was going to happen. I was so, so certain because I was going to create it and I, and there was no longer an obstacle. It was just a matter of continually seeking possibility until I got a yes. And it just happened. It was like, it was like every obstacle melted away because I, there was no, ob in my mind, there was no obstacle that was going to stop me. And, and, awesome. and, and I totally felt that I felt the vibration. I felt myself increasing the vibration and I felt my vibration connecting with those who were going to help me achieve it versus before the day before I was so in the low vibration of I'm going to get rejected. No, who's going to give this to me? I can't do it. That of course I was going to attract or create, um, or, uh, target fixation, which is the, the mechanism of driving into an object that you're, that you're, that you don't want to hit, but you're, if you're looking at it, right. If you, if you're driving your motorcycle and you look at a pole, while you're trying to make a corner, you're going to hit the pole instead of make the corner because it, it's a target fixation. And that's exactly what happens uh, in our, our focus. We focus on we don't want to have happen. We're going to create it. We focus on we do want to have happen. We're going to have a lot better results. And it's just really interesting to see that our attention can now be measured in, uh, in Hertz, in, in energy and frequency and that yep. others can pick up on it as well and, and, and help us to achieve, help us to achieve the results we want, either that low vibration negativity or the higher vibration intention. And I love that they figured out that love is the, is the hurts of the earth is that 528. So obviously we know the goal is more is higher and higher and higher frequency because we want to be resonating at the level of love. And, um, I had an expert on over the summer, uh, who is trying to get a movement together so people would enough people would meditate to affect the violence, the uh, violent crimes rate. And he cited that, you know, the same thing in, in what the bleep where they talked about how they did transcendental meditation in, in, in Washington, DC and was able to significantly lower the crime rate over the summer. And just imagine those a few thousand people doing meditation with the intention and vibration they were able to affect an entire city. And so, of course, we together collectively could make a really big difference on this planet by uh, choosing to increase our vibration and helping our loved ones to do the same. Really cool. Yeah. Love it. I, I, well, I love the work you're doing. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing with us. Um, listeners, please go to the show notes of today's podcast so you can uh, get the free book. Hopefully you guys can get it before it, it runs out or just go to that link anyway, learnsyourhealth.com slash vibe so that um, at least you'll, you'll, if you won't get the book, uh, you'll at least get some really cool things that Robin's going to be giving us. And then learnsyourhealth.com slash vibe list is going to get that uh, free list of the 200 uh, most high vibrating foods and the 45 most low vibrating foods we, we should be avoiding. I'm, I'm excited to read the whole list and to, uh, and to shift my, my grocery uh, habits to uh, think about vibration. 
And then learnchildhelp.com slash reboot is going to get those three wonderful videos. You're going to help us to learn how to uh, charge and uh, reboot our body on, a, on an energetic level. Robin, uh, you're, you're an incredible guest. And obviously, listeners should go check out your podcast, Your High Vibration Life I'd love for you to end today's show. Is there anything that you would love to share with our listeners to wrap things up? You know, you've helped me cover so much great ground and I hope that it serves your audience well, but remember to love more authentically and vulnerably and deeply. It will only help you be healthier and happier and it's just going to spread higher vibrations throughout your community, your family, and ultimately the planet. We all have to be part of that. And one way that we can love vulnerably is by sharing this episode with those we love and those we want to see have a healthier life. It's, it's kind of vulnerable to share an episode with someone uh, like a coworker or friend or a cousin, uh, because you just don't know how they're going to respond. Right. But, but do it out of vulnerable love. Uh, because this could really make a difference in their life. And, and it's so, it's so rewarding to have that feeling in your heart of compassion and love for those who you want to help uplift. So let's be that high vibration to lift our friends up, share today's episode, check out uh, Robin Openshaw's um, website, greensmoothiegirl.com. Check out your high vibration life on iTunes and definitely go to the show notes of today's podcast to get all those free goodies. Robin, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, it's my great honor. Thank you, Ashley. Enjoy what you heard today on your episode of the Learn to Health podcast. Did something move you, inspire you? Did you get great information that's going to change your life? Awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to do is to help you gain your health back. Please turn around and share this. If this is something that's helped you in any way, share this with those you love. Love the Learn True Health podcast and want to support us? Awesome. You can go to takeyoursupplements.com and you can support us that way. You'll get access to amazing supplements that are just really great quality for a great price. And there'll be someone on the other end of the line to help you pick out your supplements that are right for you. That's takeyoursupplements.com or join our membership, learntruehealth.com slash join. That's another great way to support our podcast, support our movement, and you'll be supporting yourself. Gain more information, wonderful videos, wonderful trainings, and you'll also be able to share those with those you love as well. So go to learntruehealth.com slash join. Want something fun for free? Go to learntruehealth.com and right there on the front page, you'll see where you can get our free cookbook. I spent a lot of time making it and it was so much fun. It's really delicious, healthy recipes. And you can also get our seven day doctor course uh, right there. It's seven days of naturopathic videos sent right to your inbox and you can learn from top naturopaths on how to gain health naturally. So that's takeyoursupplements.com for wonderful supplements. LearnYourHealth.com slash join to join our awesome membership, which is only open for a limited time. You can get our free healthy cookbook and you can also get for free seven days of wonderful naturopathic videos sent to you. Just go to LearnYourHealth.com and you'll see it right there on the front page. Thank you so much for being a listener and thank you for sharing and helping others. Let's spread this information and turn this ripple into a tidal wave.